So welcome to the description of programming assignment number two. The purpose of this assignment is give you practice developing an application using the JPA. And we're gonna kind of continue on with some of our themes we've talked about in videos by implementing an API for registering students with courses. And so as you'll see, you're gonna use the JPA for this. The API for the Java persistence architecture gives you functions for registering students for courses. I have a skeleton I'm gonna walk through here, but you're welcome to modify this any way you see fit, as long as you can pass the regression tests, which are in registration application tests. You can add additional models if you want. You can change the way you do the models. You can use Lombok, you can use entities, and so on and so forth. The specification for the API is contained in something that's called the API swagger.yml file. And it's really easy to see this file. I'm gonna show it to you in just a second, but you can basically go to the editor.swagger.io site and then use the file import file menu to choose the file that's on your computer. And I'll show you how to do that. As with the previous assignment, you should use registration application tests as the source of, source of truth to see what the program is supposed to do. If the behavior is not covered by the test, then you can do anything you want to implement it as long as the tests pass. So this is what happens if you go to this site that's up here in the uh, URL bar and you open this file. This is actually what's in the file. As you can see, it's you know sort of uh, a little language that's sort of block structured for defining various properties and data and models and APIs and so on. And what that converts into using Swagger is what you see down here. So you can see that there's a bunch of different operations. There's three get operations and three post operations and three delete operations. And you can see kind of what the syntax of calling those operations are going to be. If you go over here and kind of click on the uh, arrow, the expander, then it'll show you what parameters are passed. Uh, there's no parameters for get, for example, but what you get back here is going to be a uh, description of the course. This is the, the get courses method or endpoint handler. And you can see it's an array of these descriptions, which includes the description of the course, the title of the course, and the idea of the course. And also it indicates error codes. And so that's a get operation that obviously is sort of read only. There's a post operation, which you can use to add a new course. And you can see here that that takes a parameter. That's this basically this model, which is the contents of the course description here. And you can see it returns the result as the response. And there's just a bunch of other operations you can take a look at. There's delete operations, which can be used to do things like delete a specific course. You can remove a student from a particular class. You can delete a student, you can add a student, you can get the students and so on and so forth. So this is just a kind of a structured way to define your APIs using the uh, Swagger syntax over here. There's also a couple of models. There's a course, which of course is used to describe the course. And then there's also a student. And as you can see, students have a first name, a last name, a student ID, and also a, a profile photo URL. So those are basically the descriptions of what's gonna be passed around. So that gives you an idea of what is exposed from what you're gonna be implementing. So you'll be implementing all these, these methods, these endpoint handlers in your code. Now, it turns out that you can also take a look at this at runtime. When your program starts to run, there's a clever way we are able to generate this API as the program starts up, and then you can go ahead and actually display your API and you could actually query it at runtime to discover what it contained. As you can see now, we're, we're inside of the uh, API that is generated and running automatically when we started the program. I, I generated this earlier and I'll show you this later, but basically this is also giving you a view of what's being exposed here in terms of the registration controller and the operations that it provides and the models. So again, you can see that there's the course model, there's the student model, there's a couple other models that we expose for the GUI part of all this stuff. And there's a view and so on that describes how things are displayed. So this is something we'll also talk about when we look at the skeletons. This is one of the nice features that you can use to sort of 
advertise your services or the APIs for your services in a programmatic way using a web, uh, web browser or a web application. So if you come over here and you take a look at the registration folder, you see that there's essentially five classes that we give you to start out with. And again, you know, these are just here to get you started. If you want to do something different, feel free to change them as you see fit. One of the models we have here is a, a course model, which has an ID, a title, and a description. I think you've probably seen that before. And then this particular implementation has a bunch of setter getter methods. If you don't like setter getter methods, you could always use the data annotation, the at data annotation from Lombok, which will then generate those things automatically for you. And of course, when you use this with JPA, you're most likely going to want to make this an entity using the entity annotation. And then down here, we've got student, which is another important model class that we've got, which has first name, last name, and the profile photo URL, as well as an ID. And again, you will most likely want to annotate this with entity and uh, various other annotations that we've used before so you get the right ID behavior for this. There's a couple of other models you may want to generate as well, and I'll kind of talk you through them at a high level when we get a little bit further into the solution discussion. Here's the Swagger UI Web MVC configurer, and this is just something that's used to generate up that nice output that we saw when you run your program. Here's the registration application itself. As you can see, it does what all good applications do. In spring, it goes ahead and says run the application, passing in the registration application class. And as you can see here, we say this is a Spring Boot application, and it's also going to be having the enable Swagger 2 annotation, which says use Swagger to do a lot of the stuff. And here's the API method that's used to generate that documentation that we see when you go to the local host and, and give the 8080 port, it goes ahead and gets this documentation and displays it. And this is kind of what it does. I'm not gonna walk through this in detail, but it's something you can be aware of to write your own sort of um, API descriptors that other applications can come along and find and discover what it is you do. Okay, let's take a look at one more piece of the puzzle here. So this is the registration controller. This is very stripped down. Uh, as you can see here, what we've got is uh, the API version. We have the student path, which is used to get information about students in general. We have an individual student path, which we use to get information about an individual student by their ID. We have a course path, which we use to get information about the courses. We have the individual course path, which you use to get information about individual courses. And then we have the individual course student path, which is the individual course, course path with the student ID put at the end. And everything else that you do here is up to you. So you use your creativity as you see fit. You just have to make sure that your solution will pass all the tests that we provide in the test folder. And of course, the test folder is over here. And as you can see, there's the tests. And you can read this and see what it's doing. But uh, most of this stuff should be pretty straightforward. It's, it's making post requests or get requests or delete requests, passing in the appropriate parameters. So the last thing I'm going to do here is just show you kind of what my solution looks like. And I'm not obviously not going to walk through it in detail, but um, I have a course and a student file just like before, but I've, I've added some stuff to it so it can work with JPA. I've also added a bunch of repositories. There's a course registration repository, a course repository, and a student repository. And those are actually ridiculously simple uh, sort of adapter classes that take the JPA repository and parameterize them with the appropriate model class. And then that's used to generate the databases that are used by the various endpoint method handlers in the registration controller. I also created another model class, which is called the course registration class. And that is what's used to describe a course registration. And the course registration is basically what associates uh, a student with a course. And that's where you're most likely to want to use things like the many 
to one annotation in order to say that a course registration, there could be many course registrations that a given student have, there could be many course registrations that a given course has, and the many to one mapping is used to kind of associate those things cleanly from, uh, from within the way that the JPA works to, to generate the tables and, and have the foreign keys matched up properly and so on. So obviously I'm not gonna walk through the solution right now, but what I will do is I will run the test program and hopefully everything will run. Um, you can also, by the way, you can also run the actual service itself using the registration, using one of the menu options, which is called course registration. And if you do that, then you can go ahead and use the uh, mechanism of automatically finding out what's included in the APIs that are provided by that application. So as you can see, everything went ahead and ran properly. And we get a bunch of output and just indicating that it is indeed possible to get the solution to work. So that's the overview of programming assignment number one. And uh, hopefully that helps to clarify some questions. I, of course, will post this video so you can find out and go back and rewatch it at your convenience.